If, if you look at your ICANN statements from 5.1, which is all about angles, so 5.1 is angles, these first three sections, uh, there's a lot of ICANNs in these first three sections, and a lot of them are term-related things. And I find myself wondering, what do you know already? So that's going to be part of today's, like, do you know this? Do you not know this? And I'm hoping that a lot of this stuff will look familiar. So you can be like, yep, I know it. So you might want to grab that list of I can statements I just gave you and have that kind of near you as you do your notes. And as we go through the notes, I'll try to kind of point out, okay, this is the first one. And then if you know that one, you can put a little smiley face next to it. It's like, oh, we've been doing that for years. If you don't know it, maybe then you'd want to circle it or something like that. But, but just to kind of see what you're doing. And, and you'll notice if you look at that sheet that it's almost three-quarters of a page of I can statements just from these first two sections. That's why my plan is to just do two sections, have a quiz on these two sections, because a lot of it is vocabulary sort of stuff. And like we've done earlier this year, I don't plan to like ask you to define things. But if I were to say, draw a line between these two points, or draw a line segment, or a ray, you know, that you need to know what those different things are. You need to know how to measure angles and things like that. Um, all right, so then I'm going to start out and just say my Roman numeral one. I wasn't sure what to call it, so I'm going to call it terms. And these aren't going to be like official definitions. You know, it's, it's me kind of trying to sometimes take in what the book's saying, but often just saying, well, what makes sense to me? If you have a line, a line does what? Anyone want to quick throw something out there? It's straight. I heard that from somebody, so it's straight. If you have an actual line, is it long, is it short? A line should go on for forever. Uh, so straight, it goes forever. So that first I can statement, I can explain what a line is and draw one. That's the explain means you should know that a line is going to be straight if we just say a line. Um, and it should go on forever. So have you, are you guys used to, this is what I'm banking, that you will have seen notation like this before. Like a little AB with a line over. Okay. So what that's saying is if I were to give you a question on your quiz saying, all right, here's point A, here's point B, and I were to say draw this capital A, capital B with a line over it, with the arrows going in both directions, what would you do there? Draw a line from A to B. So is that it? Yes. If you go a little bit further. But you have those arrows on the end, so you have your arrows there. So the line, you're right in that the line connects A and B, but the line also has to keep going for forever. So that would be that whole first I can statement. That if you get something that says A, B like that with a line over it, I give you the two points, you know that the line keeps going straight forever. And I have some nice straight edges that you'll be able to use on the quiz. We okay for lines? The next thing is array. Array. I always looked at array as kind of being like half of a line. Um, so I'm going to say it's... Ooh, I kind of hate to write that down. Uh, it goes straight forever, but only in one direction. So straight forever in one direction. So this should be that second I can statement that if we were to instead say draw, now I'll do CD. So if I say draw, I'm going to do a capital C, capital D, but now the arrow's just going to the right. And I believe they always just have it going to the right. They write the order of the letters and such that the starting one's on the left and it goes to the right. So now if I have two points C and D, it goes on forever, but it only goes forever in, in the right direction. So it starts at C, goes through D, and then keeps going for forever. If you wanted to have something point left, that'd be possible, but maybe we'll just say EF. So if I say draw EF like that, if your ray is going to go to the left, well then E has to be on the right, and then F has to be on the left. it would be something like that. Good, so we always start at the first letter and then go to the second letter. And it doesn't have to be alphabetical. 
you know, I could have, I wouldn't mess yours up, but maybe we could have called this one KC. Like I said, I wouldn't change yours. But, so the alphabetical doesn't matter. Yes? Okay, so far no review, or I'll review. Yes? Can you guess? Okay, good. That's what I was really hoping for. Next one, then, we want to say is a segment. So a segment is going to be, I messed up my color scheme. The next one is a segment. A segment is a part of a line between two points. So now we lose the, the arrows going off to the left and the right. So now it's just part of a line between two points. I need two letters. Anyone? E.G. No, so draw E.G. J B worse. Trying to figure out what E.G. is. I get the J B. That's Justin Bieber. Um, oh, okay. I'm with you. I was, I was too busy thinking about Justin Bieber. Um, all right. E.G. So now if we have E.G., you'll notice we have just a straight line over E.G. We don't have the arrows on either end. So now my line segment just connects the... The two points there connects E and G. So that would be a line segment. And that should be that third I can state. Now when you have two or more, either like lines, rays, or segments, the things we were just talking about, when they meet, they're going to meet at a vertex. So I'm going to say a vertex. It would be a place where... 2 plus, I'm just going to say that's for two or more lines, rays, or segments. Meet. And I'm going to say it forms an angle. And that's not insanely clear, I don't think. So I'm going to take and actually throw a little bit of everything on there. So I'm going to start out with a line. And I'm going to connect to my line, kind of going horizontally array. And then I'm going to have a segment connecting those, that line and the ray. And I'm going to label mine just E down here for this point, And D up on top. And then F over here on the side. But it could be where two segments meet or two lines meet. I just picked one of all three. And I want to look right here at this thing. I'm going to say that one right there, E, is going to be my vertex, although technically we have three verte vertices, but that's the vertex I'm going to be looking at, and this here is going to be an angle, the angle that I'm talking about. And we could give that angle a couple different names. Uh, the easiest, the shortest, I think, is just to call it angle E. So usually for angles, they'll do like a little 45 degree angle there and then write the capital letter of whatever vertex is next to there or you could call that instead what you do is you kind of work your way around the triangle that you say well I want to say this angle right there so to do that they'll say angle DEF and the point that's actually at the vertex is always goes in the middle so another way to say that same thing would be angle DEF And my last option for that angle is to also kind of define the, the sides of that angle, but to go the opposite direction now. So I start at the F and then do E and the D. So my other option then would be angle FED. You can pretty much only do that first one if you only have one coming through there, one angle at point E. If instead my original line or my ray had extended this way. Now it'd be a little bit hard to call it E because really you could get four different angles at least off of that point there. So that's where you would have to do the DEF for the FED for that one. But that would be labeling angles. Um, as far as protractors go, uh, I could switch to a different program show you how to do a protractor. But with this program, it's kind of a pain. So I'm going to guess that that's not new for you, the protractor thing. And we're done with terms now. So I'm going to jump into my Roman numeral 2. 
in Roman numeral 2, I'm going to call types. By that really I should maybe say types of angles. And this is going to now go into, if you're looking at I can statements, we just did E with the labeling angles. Now we're going to look at F and G and some of those here. So I'm going to start out with acute angles. Acute angles. And acute angles, those all have to be less than 90 degrees. So less. less than 90 degrees. So an example would be something like this, you know, like a, well, it's probably about a 50 degree angle, something like that, but less than a right angle. Which brings me to my second type, which would be a right angle. And a right angle has to have a measure of 90 degrees. So I'm just going to write 90 degrees. And one of those if I have one ray going vertically, one ray going horizontally, that there would be a 90 degree angle. And usually if you have a 90 degree angle, what they do is they put in a little symbol. Basically they make a little square out of the vertex. Um, that's a little bit ugly, I'll give that a second shot. Um, but they'll do something like that to symbolize that it's 90 degrees. So, 90 degree symbol, right there. Now, so we have acute less than 90, we have right angles, those are 90. Now we want to do the ones that's greater than 90, so that'll be an obtuse angle. And obtuse angles now are going to be greater than 90 degrees. So if you wanted to do an example of an obtuse angle, that would look maybe something more like this that this angle here now is going to be larger than 90 degrees. Those are the three main ones, um, but here's another one that you see sometimes, more of a special case, a straight angle. If I were to take that obtuse angle and keep making it larger, you get to a point where your two rays that are making your angle look just like one straight line. I draw on a straight line, put a point in there, that's going to be your straight angle. Where now when you're looking at this thing here, whipping all the way across the top, you have 180 degrees. And that's probably then how I should define it. Just say a straight angle is going to be a 180 degree angle. So it looks just like a line. Now we have, for our next two, we have complementary angles and supplementary angles. And it seems like some people get those mixed up. I know I struggled with those a little bit. But complementary angles, so complementary angles, those are going to be two angles now. So we're talking a pair of angles whose sum is 90. And we'll see the supplementary in a second are similar to that. So two angles. whose sum is 90 degrees. And I think probably the easiest way to draw that is to start out with a right angle. So if I do something like that now, that should be 90 degrees total. And now we just need to put a ray anywhere in there to break that 90 degree up into two angles. If I pick something like that, then I could kind of eyeball them, and this one here is maybe 35 degrees. So if that's 35, if I know I started with a 90, the other one would have to be 55 degrees. So 35 degrees and 55 degrees then would be complementary angles. The other option is going to be the supplementary angles. Hitting the wrong buttons today, so supplementary. So supplementary angles. And my supplementary angles, now instead of adding to 90, we're going to have two angles whose sum is 180 degrees. So two angles whose sum is 
180 degrees. So now instead of two angles that form a right angle like before, 180 was our straight angle, it's just our straight line. So if I start with a straight line and then throw a ray in there, now we have two angles. Over here would be my angle 1 and my angle 2. That together those two are going to form 180 degrees. And I could kind of pick angles, like so for this example, maybe my angle would be, it's less than 90 for sure, so maybe I'll say 80 degrees over here. And then my other side would have to be 100 degrees. Now I know when I was first learning this, I struggled with which one was complementary and which one was supplementary. So for me, what I remembered is that it's alphabetical, that if I'm looking at these two, my complementary comes alphabetically before my supplementary. And if you're counting, 90 degrees comes before 180. So I remembered it as though the first one was paired with the first one. Complementary C paired with 90 degrees. Supplementary S paired with 180. That worked for me. It's not real fancy, but maybe keep that in mind if you find that you're getting the two mixed up. Now we have a few more we want to go through. The next one's going to be congruent angles. So we just finished up, I should say, the I can statement G. So you might want to mark on your page, do you know that, do you not know that? Would you be able to say complementary, they add up to 90? Would you be able to pick them out on a graph? Um, and H, I can identify pairs of angles that are complementary, supplementary, same thing. All right, so now we're going to move over into uh, I can statement I, which is the congruent angles. So congruent angles. And congruent angles, it's congruent is kind of like the math equivalent of equal for this geometry stuff. So if you have congruent angles, it's kind of like saying they're equal angles. Uh, our official definition is going to say something like they have the same measure. So have the same measure. Or if you want to put it in layman's terms, if you're looking at that and not thinking it's real clear, you could say the same number of degrees. So in other words, kind of what I'd said before, uh, two of the same numbers are equal, but now if you have two of the same angles, we'd say they're congruent. So I don't know if I'd write this first part, but at least if you had numbers, we'd say like 4 equals 4. Know that the number 4 is equal to the number 4. But now as soon as we're talking about angles, um, maybe I'll even write it out. So same numbers are equal. But now when we're doing geometry stuff, and you'll get the same for like if you have the same lengths, they'll say that they're congruent instead of equal. But if you were to have like angle B, is congruent, here's the congruent symbol, it's an equal sign with a little tilde above it, kind of a little squiggly above it. So angle B is congruent to angle ABC. So by that we're saying two angles are congruent. And when I'm doing this thing here, saying angle B is congruent to angle ABC, I could draw something out and say, all right, here's my A, here's my B, here's my C. So now, really, they're talking about the exact same angles. They have to be congruent. So jumping on from there, we want to talk about uh, something that bisects. If you look at that word bi, you know it shows up in bicycle and other places like that, where bi means two. If you're going to take and bisect an angle, that's where you cut it in half. So now, if I would, I don't really want to mess up my ABC, so maybe I'll kind of jump over here and do another one. So here I have a certain angle, we could call it angle D, and maybe put in a C and a E, just kind of keep them in order. Well, if I wanted to bisect that, if I wanted to cut it in half, I could just try to take and stick an angle right up through the middle. And maybe put a G on there. So now that, that ray, DG, 
is going to bisect angle CDE. It took and cut it into two angles that are both half of the original angle. So bisects just means cuts in half. And we're getting close. What I just drew was an example of an angle bisector. So we could say then an angle bisector. That an angle bisector is going to be a ray that cuts an angle. into two congruent angles. And just a reminder that congruent is just means equal. So a ray that cuts an angle into two congruent angles. And the example is going to be up there. And what you could say is you could say uh, DG and if we're talking about it being a ray, we have our arrow above it, but our arrow starts at the letter where the ray starts. So DG is the angle bisector. If that first angle, we'll say this angle up here in red, if angle CDG, we have to do the three letters now because there's more than one possible angle at point D. So if that angle there is congruent to, so my little equals with the tilted, that second angle that we have here, the down below. So I'll call that angle EDG. So if that's true, then we know that DG is going to be the angle bisector. So that there gets us our um, ICANN statement J, which is our epically long number of ICANN statements. But um, So for this section here, just lots of terms. And I'd really work on identifying right away which terms do I know, which terms do I not know. Keep your notes close to you as you do your homework. Uh, but you really need to start getting those terms down pretty cold in order to do this well. Thanks for listening.